Hello guys, once again welcome you all on this online lecture platform and in previous lecture we have started the topic that is methods of extracting total bacterial DNA from habitat as well as metagenomic analysis and it is very crucial and an important step for any kind of uh, metagenomic analysis and in that we have covered basic approach then various strategies that are used for isolation of metagenic DA, DNA then we have covered method of cell lysis it includes chemical as well as mechanical with based method of disruption then we have studied in detail various mechanical as well as chemical based methods then we have covered DNA extraction process then precipitation of that extracted DNA we have covered and we have end up with that uh, last lecture with quantification of metagenomic DNA. So here in this today's video lecture we will see remaining steps and procedure that are carried out for purification and extraction as a part of extraction and purification process. So contaminants of metagenomic DNA. So as we know that uh, environments they are it may be soil or it may be water they are high sources or high diverse and complex environments and besides microbes it contains uh, contain lots of inorganic as well as uh, organic form of other chemicals as well as other microbes it includes some eukaryotes single cellular eukaryotes such as uh, yeast, algae. So, in short, contaminants, they are the major hurdles of any kind of metagenomic DNA analysis and contaminants, they are the major problem in extraction and purification of metagenomic DNA. So, major contaminant includes humic acid as it is the major component of soil and it provides nutrient to crops or plants and it has various roles in soil it acts as in uh, fertility as well as water holding capacity and it is a normal component of soil but for uh, this uh, metagenomic analysis perspective it is contaminant okay so co-purification of contaminants such as humic acid compound is a major problem associated with various soil metagenomic projects so this humic acid it is most of the time it is co-extracted and co-purified with uh, normal DNA molecule and these contaminants they are not completely removed during classical DNA extraction protocols such as uh, use of detergent then phenylchloroform and protease treatments and humic substances uh, they are formed by decomposition of plant animal and microbial biomass. So humic substances they are structurally complex uh, poly electrolytic in nature and they form yellow to dark brown in color uh, with molecular mass range from 0 0.1 to uh, 300 kilo dalton okay so based on the solubility in acids and alkali humic substances can be divided into three main categories so first humic acid which are soluble in alkali and insoluble in acid then second form is fulvic acid which is soluble in alkali and acid and the third is humin which is insoluble in both alkali as well as acid so thus almost all natural organic compounds can become bound or absorbed to humic substances so that's why it is the major contaminant because it uh, reacts with almost any sort of organic as well as inorganic compounds and in addition humic acids have physical chemical properties uh, that similar to nucleic acids because both these are acids uh, one is humic acid and second is uh, nucleic acids so most of their physical chemical properties they are similar and it creates problem in further analytical tools uh, and techniques Therefore, humic substances along with uh, adsorbed organic molecules, they are generally co-extracted with DNA, means they are extracted along with DNA 
and humic acid affects almost all molecular biological methods such as hybridization, then restriction, digestion of the DNA, then PCR and bacterial transformation. So, it is a major contaminant and it creates various hurdles uh, while analyzing that uh, DNA and therefore, in most of the metagenomic projects, the bottleneck remains the isolation of metagenomic DNA without humic substances. So, it is the main and crucial step that the DNA that is extracted, it should be free from all sort of contaminants and majority uh, this humic acid. Then purification of metagenomic DNA, once uh, we have extracted the DNA sample, it should be obtained in purified form as much as as purified form and most of the analytical uh, methods and their efficiency and their accuracy is depend upon purified form of this metagenomic DNA. So, several strategies have been developed for purification of soil metagenomic DNA and the first is cesium chloride density gradient centrifugation which is widely used and is an efficient strategy for purification of DNA from contaminants. However, due to longer processing time, this method is not suitable for purification of multiple samples as it need uh, more time. So, recently several uh, simple and rapid purification methods have been reported or discovered for the successful removal of contaminants from metagenomic DNA and this method includes processing of soil sample uh, based on agar gel purification, then electro elution and various chromatographical techniques. So, several uh, actually this is the quantification of humic acid the major contaminant and various reports uh, they have shown that absorbance at 230 value to estimate the humic substances and humic compound absorb uh, 230 nanometer whereas DNA absorb uh, 260 nanometer and therefore absorbance ratio of 260 to 230 nanometer uh, is the main criteria to identify any kind of contamination caused by humic acid compounds. So, this is how we can uh, identify whether DNA is contaminated with humic acid or not. So, here uh, we have started with discussion regarding uh, removal of inhibitors by sample processing and it includes uh, first type that is chromatographic based methods. and there are various kinds of chromatographic methods uh, nowadays they are, that are used. It includes gel filtration, then ion exchange, then adsorption and combine. Both of these methods they are combined. So, gel filtration it includes a poly uh, base bio gel of various sizes, then cephadex gel as well as a, uh, cepharyl and various other kind of gels and ion exchange includes DEA cellulose uh, amber light then adsorption chromatographic method includes uh, hydroxypatite uh, PVPP then silica and powdered activated carbon and combined method includes uh, cephadex as well as PVPP and cepharose uh, as well as PVPP. So, overall these are chromatographic methods that are used to remove inhibitors and to purify DNA samples. Then removal of uh, inhibitors by agarogel purification and the extraction of DNA from agarogels after electrophoresis is a routine procedure in molecular biology experiment and under standard electrophoretic condition humic acid migrate uh, with nucleic acids, but uh, then migration of humic acid is inhibited by adding several chemicals uh, like uh, PVPP in agarogel and it eliminates uh, co-migration uh, by retarding the uh, movement of uh, humic acid and only DNA can be moved in electrostatic field. So, electrophoretic mobility of humic acid can be retarded by using PUPP as a uh, retardant in an elect agarogel electrophoresis. So, based on this simple strategy have been developed uh, by addition of PVPP standard agarogel uh, and separation of DNA from humic compounds and subsequent extraction of that separated DNA from agarose using standard methods. So, this is how we can purify DNA by agarose gel.
purification method the next method is gel filtration again uh, gels they are poured in column and uh, the pure samples they are loaded in that columns and the dna is purified uh, by using uh, various gel filtration methods and gel filtration also known as size exclusion resins it is actually a type of chromatography that is wisely used in purification of soil dna so typically inhibitory substances they are removed using spin columns packed with various gel filtration assemblies or resins and there are various uh, gels it includes uh, sapphiros 4b sapphadex uh, g20 and sapphadex g50 they are commonly used to fill the column and to use uh, in purification of dna and it removes various uh, kinds of humic acid contaminants so they have been reported uh, that sepha 4 4b gives superior separation of dna uh, from humix and purified dna showed constantly greater amplification than dna purified than other materials the next strategy used is electro illusion so agarogel electrophoresis and pfg can be used to purify soil dna Uh, then etbr staining nucleic acid exposes to uv light and substantial sample processing which is uh, time are considered to be the disadvantage means overall this process requires uh, time lots of time so therefore electro illusion has been considered as an alternative strategy to soil dna purification uh, so standard electro illusion involves illusion of dna fragments out of an agarose Uh, gel slices into dialysis bag and subsequent precipitation so in general 2% or 4% lmp agarose gel solution is mixed with an equal volume of crude dna and agarose blocks they are electrophoresed so this is overall details regarding electro illusion and after migration of humic acid compounds out of agarose blocks pure high molecular weight dna can be electro eluted okay then uh, next process for removal of inhibitors is purification by combination method so all these methods they are used in combination so not single method is uh, useful that's why all these methods we have discussed they are used in combination and uh, some studies have compared filtration through three different types of spin columns which includes various kinds of gel gels like 4b pvpp sapphiros and further purification of soil metagenic dna is carried out by using pg peg precipitation then, then uh, similarly after uh, you using this abomination method it is also extracted with isopropanol precipitation and uh, other chemicals so in short all these methods they are used uh, in combination to purify dna molecule then there are uh, some kits metagenomic dna extraction kits they are widely used and the kits contain all sort of purified reagents and chemicals that are necessary for uh, extraction and purification of that uh, metagenomic dna and that uh, commercial kit includes uh, ultra clean uh, power soil power max uh, these are developed by some of the laboratories in us and these kits they are popularly used for extraction and purification process so recently rna based uh, kits they are also invented and rna power soil uh, then fast rna and other kits they are also uh, used then lastly it's a more important topic that is application of metagenomic studies so why we are performing this metagenomic studies so first is 16s rdna based libraries and this used in microbial diversity analysis so first thing what we can do by using metagenomic analysis is that we can identify which type of microbial communities or which type of microbes they are present at that various kinds of different environmental categories so it is the most important thing as far as microbial identification is concerned then the dna library construction which is used for functional screening and from that we get novel bioactive compounds of various biotechnological importance and these compounds have 
vast application in biotechnology field then next approach is c2 amplification and identification of novel metabolic pathways so by using this metagenomic analysis we can also carry out or we can also study metabolic pattern or metabolic profile of that particular microbial community and then we can also study community based uh, phenomenon that is kurom sensing which is uh, cell to cell communication between microbes and then we can also study single cell genomics it is genome wide assembly of uncultured organism and by using single cell genomics we can culture that uncultured micro uh, microbes and then mobile metagenomics uh, by which we can uh, study horizontal gene transfer analysis means how in that microbial community genes they get transferred horizontally and how they acquire new genes and how the species get diverged from normal species to form different species so there are vast applications of metagenomic studies and mostly it is used in phylogenetic analysis in identification of microbial communities as well as uh, we can get various kind of bioactive compounds as well as novel molecules from that uh, unrevealed microbial community and that is uh, studied under functional genomics so this is all our regarding extraction and purification of that metagenomic dna and further its application in metagenomic studies so thank you for watching this video